the NMRS uses whole genome sequencing technology to determine the species of mycobacteria. Sometimes, identification to species level is not possible. This video discusses why this may happen and what you should do if it does. Organisms within the genus Mycobacterium can be subdivided into three broad categories. First is the Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, comprised of multiple species that can cause clinical tuberculosis. In the UK, Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the most common species. Cases of Mycobacterium bovis and BCG-related disease are also seen, with Mycobacterium africanum isolated relatively infrequently. Some of these species are less easily identified by WGS, but identification to the complex level is almost always achieved. Mycobacterium leprae, the causative agent of leprosy, or Hansen's disease, stands distinct from the tuberculosis complex. It is rarely cultured in the UK, though cases of leprosy are still diagnosed in patients who have spent significant time in at-risk areas. The third and largest category is that of the non-tuberculous mycobacteria, sometimes referred to as NTMs. There are several different ways of classifying NTMs, but they can generally be subdivided by their rate of growth. The slow growers take more than seven days to grow, whilst the rapid growers take fewer than seven days to grow. Both categories contain species which can cause human disease. Some of the most common are shown here, but there are more than 150 NTM species in total. Often, the NMRS is able to identify exactly which species of NTM is present in a culture. However, there are times when this may not be possible. Reasons for this include Contamination The sample is overgrown by contaminating non-mycobacterial flora. The DNA from these organisms interferes in the speciation process, reducing the accuracy of the whole genome sequencing prediction. Mixed infection Patients with chronic lung disease may be colonised with multiple different NTM species. This can make interpretation of WGS data much more complex. Rare species WGS identification is reliant on the database used. Very rare NTM species are not well represented in the database, reducing our ability to identify them. In an ideal world, we would be able to identify every NTM to species level. But as we cannot always do this, the question is, does this matter? Non-tuberculous mycobacteria are environmental organisms. People encounter these organisms most days of their lives, and only a fraction of people become colonised. An even smaller number go on to develop clinical disease. Guidelines exist on diagnosing NTM infections, with publications from both the American Thoracic Society and Infectious Diseases Society of America, and more recently, the British Thoracic Society. These lay out the combination of clinical, radiological and microbiological findings required to diagnose a patient with NTM disease. So, if the NMRS cannot identify the NTM species in a sample from your patient, the first question is, do I think this patient may have clinical NTM disease? If the answer is no, then no further action is needed. If the answer is yes, then we recommend that further samples are taken from the patient. Even if speciation is also not possible on the second sample, having two sets of sequencing data can often allow the NTM present to be identified to at least a broad group level. NMRS clinicians are always happy to discuss such cases as we may be able to offer more guidance in the context of more clinical information. In summary, Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex isolates are reliably identifiable to genus level and usually to species level. NTM isolates are not always so easily identifiable to species level. In such cases, if there is a concern about clinical NTM disease, consider sending a further sample or discussing the case with NMRS clinicians.